Hi, I'm Mark Barsamian. In this video, I'll be discussing Pascal's formula and the binomial theorem. This material is from section 9.7. The corresponding homework is this collection of exercises from section 9.7. The topics for this video will be uh, discussing particular important values of C parentheses n comma r, then discussing what's called Pascal's formula and Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem, and then finally using the binomial theorem. We'll use the concept of combinations from section 9.5. Remember that an R combination of a set of N elements is uh, a subset of R elements taken from the set of N elements. And the number of R combinations of a set of N elements is denoted by this symbol, C parentheses N comma R, or by this symbol, parentheses and then an N sitting above an R. Both of these are spoken N choose R, or N take R, or the number of R combinations of a set of N elements. And remember the formula for finding the value of these things. The value of this expression is found by this factorial formula. In this video, we'll frequently rewrite factorial expressions in different ways. So start by recalling the definition of the factorial. n factorial means this expression. But that one factorial expression can be written in a variety of ways. So, so take that expression and recognize that this part of it is just n minus 1 factorial. So what we've just shown is that n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial. Again, this part of the formula for n factorial is just simply n minus 1 factorial. But now we could do the same thing. n minus 1 factorial could be written as n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. So that would mean that n factorial equals n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial. And there are lots of variations on this idea. So for instance, if you take n factorial and you park next to it n plus 1 and you multiply them together, what you get is n plus 1 factorial. That's a variation on this idea. Example one, particular important values of the number of combinations. Now we've done some of this sort of thing in a previous video. First of all, this symbol, C parentheses N comma N, also written this way and spoken N choose N. Well, that symbol denotes this. You simply populate that factorial formula with, uh, with those characters. The key thing is that you end up with a 0 factorial in the denominator. 0 factorial is 1. These n factorials cancel, and you get an answer of the number 1. Question B. Uh, n choose n minus 1. Well, again, you just populate that formula with those symbols. The key thing is that in the denominator, you have this n minus n minus 1, which simplifies to 1 factorial. Now, of course, 1 factorial is just the number 1. Another thing to notice is that this thing in the numerator can be written using one of those tricks. n factorial can be written as n times n minus 1 factorial. And then finally, in this expression, we can cancel some stuff. That n minus 1 factorial in the numerator cancels that n minus 1 factorial in the denominator, and we end up with just value of n. And if we do uh, a similar uh, kind of canceling for this expression, we get that n choose n minus 2 is equal to n times n minus 1 over 2. A very simple special case is n choose 0. We end up again with a 0 factorial in the, new, in the denominator, so we end up with the final answer that's the number 1. And then this special case, which I discussed in an earlier video, n choose r. 
means you populate this formula. And then there is a trick. The trick is you replace the letter R with this expression, n minus n minus R. That is just a, a fancy way, a very clumsy way of writing R. But realize then what this symbol stands for is this n choose n minus r. So what we've just shown is that n choose r is the same as n choose n minus r. And hey, we've just seen an example of that uh, at work up above. n choose n is 1. n choose 0 is 1. We could think of this expression as one of those, could think of this expression as one of those, and it makes sense that the results would be equal. Let's go on. What's called Pascal's formula is this. For all integers n and r, such that 1 is less than or equal to r, which is less than or equal to n, for all pairs of integers like that, this equation is true. n plus 1 choose r equals n choose r minus 1 plus n choose r. Now there are two nice proofs of this in the book. One is an algebraic proof, and I've just reproduced it from the book in gory detail. Now you can see that I, I'm not going to go through all this, all this uh, in, in uh, minute detail, but I've just simply written down the factorial expressions for these n choose r minus 1 and n choose r symbols and then gone to work making little simplifications or little changes. So for example, n minus the quantity r minus 1 is equal to n minus r plus 1. And then recognizing that these two expressions have different denominators, we have to get a common denominator. So I multiply the left expression by this term, which is just the number 1, and then multiply the right expression by this fraction, which is just the number 1. Those circled expressions are just ordinary fractions. That's not a combinations symbol. It's just r divided by r. And then I went to work with these symbols. So I rewrote this one, moving this r in, and moving this r all the way over to here. And then look what I did with that. r times r minus 1 factorial is just r factorial. So I used that idea that we can rewrite factorial expressions in many different ways. And then look what I did over here on the right. One minor change, I just brought this expression over to the left of that term. And uh, in the numerator, I just changed the order. So my n plus 1 got put there, and my plus r, or my minus r, got moved out here, in preparation for distributing this n factorial two places. So I end up with n factorial times this term minus n factorial times that term. And then I noticed that this expression with a minus sign in front cancels this expression that doesn't have a minus sign in front. So we end up with just this term surviving n factorial times n plus 1. But wait a second, that can be written as n plus 1 factorial. So lots of uh, minute changes, step by step, which results in this expression. So it's tedious for me to go through. You should read these uh, steps in great detail. Make sure that you can follow them. Now, there's another nice proof in the book, what's called a combinatorial proof. In math, combinatorics has to do with the counting of sets. So a combinatorial proof is one in which we prove the value of some quantity by making observations about counting sets. So we can prove Pascal's formula using a combinatorial argument, that is, talking about counting sets. To start with, let's consider this symbol that's on the left side of Pascal's formula n plus 1, choose r. That symbol represents the number of subsets of r elements that can be chosen from a set that has 
n plus 1 elements. So let's think about this. Suppose we have a set capital X that has n plus 1 elements, and they're denoted x subscript 1, x subscript 2, all the way up to x subscript n plus 1. The second to last term is x subscript n. So that set has n plus 1 elements in it. Now this is a script x with a subscript r. I'm going to use that to denote the collection of all subsets of x that have r elements. That is, this symbol, script x, subscript r, is the set of all sets s that are subsets of capital X such that the number of elements in set s is equal to r. So this collection, script x, subscript r, that's a collection of subsets of the set capital X. Now remember that the set of all subsets of x is called the power set. It's denoted this way, script p, capital X. So I've introduced a smaller collection of subsets denoted script x, subscript little r. So that's a subset of the collection of all subsets of the set capital X. Now that we've defined this symbol, script x, subscript r, it's the set of all subsets of set capital X that have r elements, realize that this symbol n plus 1, choose r, that's the symbol on the left side of Pascal's formula. That symbol stands for the number of sets in this set. Because this set is made up of all of the subsets of set capital X that have r elements. Set capital X has n plus 1 elements, and so the number of subsets of that that have r elements is what that symbol stands for. So we've given an interpretation of that symbol in terms of uh, the number of elements of some set. Let's go on. Next, observe that this set that I introduced can be described as the union of two disjoint sets. Remember, this set is the set of all subsets of capital X that have R elements in them. Well, I'm going to define a set script A. And it's going to be the sets that are subsets of X that have R elements and that contain this one particular element. They contain that element. Set B in the collection of all subsets of set capital X that have R elements. This set, script B, is going to be the set of all subsets of capital X such that the set B has R elements in it, and this special element is not an element of B. So we're looking at sets that do not have that element. Now notice that script A and script B are disjoint, and that their union is all of that set, script X, subscript R. So let me draw a picture for this. So there's a diagram showing the set of all subsets of set capital X that have R elements, and they come in two flavors. One is the green flavor, denoted script A. Those are the subsets that contain X in plus 1. And then the other flavor is flavor B, script B, the, the, the sets that do not contain that element. So therefore, by the addition rule, the number of elements in the big set is just the sum of the number of elements in the smaller sets. That is, this quantity that we're interested in, n plus 1 choose r, can be obtained by adding these quantities, the number of elements in set script A and the number of elements in set script B. 
The nice thing about this is that finding the values of these expressions is fairly simple. So this formula is very useful. To find this quantity, the number of elements in set script A, remember that this set, script A, it's the set of subsets of x that have r elements and that do contain that special element, x subscript n plus 1. They do contain that element. Well, to think about how many subsets like that there are, let's consider the task of choosing such a subset. And let's think of it as two tasks. The first task is, well, we have to have that element to go in the set. It's got to be in there. So task one is to choose that element to go in set A. Of course, there's only one way to do that task. And so we would write k subscript 1 equals 1 as the number of ways to do that task. And then the remaining task is this, task number 2, to choose the remaining elements. We need r minus 1 more elements to fill out our set because our set has to have r elements. We've chosen one so far, now we need the rest of them. Well, they're all going to have to be chosen from this smaller batch of possible elements. Well, the number of ways of doing that is this, n choose r minus 1. So that's our k2, the number of ways of doing task number 2. So the total number of ways of doing this task of choosing such a subset is this. Just multiply those numbers together. Well, the first number was the number 1. The second number was this, n choose r minus 1. So we end up with this conclusion that the number of elements in set script A is n choose r minus 1. Let's go on. Now to find this quantity the number of elements in set script B. Remember what set script B is. It's the subsets called capital B in set capital X that have these properties. The number of elements in set capital B is R, so it's a set containing R elements, and that special element is not an element of set capital B. Set capital B does not contain that element. Well, if that element is not in set B, then B is a subset of this smaller set. B is a subset of X, so it's a subset of this whole set. But we know that B doesn't have that element in it, so it must be a subset of a smaller set that would be, that would be made up of just those. So the number of sets in this collection, script B, will just be the number of R element subsets of a set that has N elements. This smaller set has only N elements. So the number of those subsets is N choose R. So the number of, of sets in this collection, the number of sets in the collection script B is N choose R. Now let's substitute the expressions that we found for the number of elements in set script A and the number of elements in set script B into our earlier equation. We had this equation that said the number of elements in that big set is equal to the sum of, of these numbers. And now we have expressions for those two numbers. And we already had this expression for the number of elements in the big set. So we already knew that that number was that combination's expression. Now we have an expression for the number of elements in set script A. It's this, n choose r minus 1. And the number of elements in set script B, well, we just found that it's n choose r. And we end up with Pascal's formula. Now, this took a lot of writing, a lot of talking. Uh, it doesn't seem worth it. It seems like it's just easier to do the algebraic proof using those, uh, those factorial expressions. But in fact, you can get better at making these combinatorial arguments quicker. 
and uh, and also they they lead to some real understanding. You can have have pictures to illustrate these sets, like that. That's a picture that illustrates uh, Pascal's formula. So that's the end of the combinatorial proof of Pascal's formula. Now I want to discuss Pascal's triangle. It's a way of visualizing Pascal's formula. What we have in the cells of this table are values of this expression, A choose B. The number A on top is in red, the number B on bottom is in green. So in the cells of this table are just a bunch of different uh, values of that. So for instance, this cell containing the number 6 is 4 choose 2. 4 choose 2 is the number 6. So that's what this table is full of. Now what does Pascal's formula say? Pascal's formula says that n plus 1 choose r equals n choose r minus 1 plus n choose r. Let's look for places in this table where we can see Pascal's formula at work. Consider these entries. Notice that 3 equals 1 plus 2. Or I could write 1 plus 2 equals 3. Now realize that that number 1 is a factorial expression. In fact, all three of these numbers are in the table, so they're all factorial expressions. This is a particular instance of Pascal's formula. If I copy down Pascal's formula with n equals 2 and r equals 1, it becomes this expression, which means these numbers, which shows up in the table here. Let's consider these numbers. Notice that 3 plus 1 equals 4. But each of those numbers being in this table is a result of um, a, a, an A choose B computation that number 3 is 3 choose 2, that number 1 is 3 choose 3, and that number 4 is 4 choose 3. So this is a particular instance of Pascal's formula using n equals 3 and r equals 3. If you copy down Pascal's formula using n equals 3 and r equals 3, you get this equation, which represents these numbers. Now look down here. If I look at those three cells, notice that that equation is Pascal's formula, and it shows up as those three cells in this table. The sum of these two numbers equals this number. Now I want to talk about what's called the binomial theorem. First, the definition of a binomial. A sum of two terms, such as a plus b, is called a binomial. The binomial theorem gives us an expression for non-negative integer powers of a binomial. That is, things like this, a plus b raised to the nth power. The theorem says this, a plus b raised to the nth power is this awful looking summation expression, which in expanded form using ellipses, remember these are called ellipses, in expanded form using ellipses is this big mess. Now Pascal's formula can be used in the proof of the binomial theorem. It's a long proof, and there's also a simpler combinatorial proof. I'm not going to discuss either of them in these notes on this video. So I want to do some examples just using the binomial theorem. So question A is uh, find the expansion of this using the binomial theorem. The binomial theorem is this. The key thing to note is the exponent is what gets uh, denoted by the letter n. So there you see that I've just simply copied down the binomial theorem, this expression, and I've replaced all the n's with the number 4. 
Now let's get to work writing what this really means. So there I've just expanded the summation formula. Now let's simplify these factorial expressions. Note that 4 choose 0 is the number 1. And b raised to the 0 power is also the number 1. And notice that 4 choose 1 is the number 4. 4 choose 2, if you do the work off to the side somewhere, Four choose two is the number six. Four choose three is going to be the same as four choose one. Remember that property at the beginning of the video. N choose R is the same as N choose N minus R. And then finally, 4 choose 4, that's going to be the same as 4 choose 0. That's just the number 1. And also, notice that a to the 4 minus 4, that's going to be a to the 0. That's going to be the number 1. So we end up with this expression. There's our expansion. Now notice how that looks. In the expanded version of the binomial theorem presented here, the first term is just a raised to the power n. The last term is b raised to the power n. Even though in the summation there's always an a and a b there and there's this messy n choose k term, the very beginning term and the very last term simplify quite a bit. Let's go on. Question b. Find the coefficient of x to the sixth when this is expanded by the binomial theorem. Well, uh, let's just get right to work. So we start by just copying down what the binomial theorem says. Now, we are interested in the term that has and x to the sixth in it. Well, notice that that's going to be, uh, that exponent six is going to be from the term that has k equals four. There you see, I expanded the term that has k equals 4. There's the term, and when you expand it, you see that there's an x to the 6th in there. x to the 6th is being multiplied by a bunch of numbers. So our job is to figure out what all those numbers are. Our job is to figure out the coefficient of x to the 6th. So we need to keep writing all this stuff. So there I've rearranged my terms and I've expanded some of the factorials. You see that these six factorials cancel. And you see that that 4 and that 2 cancel that 8. And you see that that 3 reduces that 9 to a 3. So I end up with 10 times 3 times 7 times 64 times 81 times x to the sixth power. Now, what is that number? That's just this. So the coefficient is this number. So the power x to the sixth appears in this term, which when you do all the, the arithmetic, is this term. Question E. Find the coefficient of u to the 8, v to the 10th, when this is expanded by the binomial theorem. 
Well, let's do the same thing we did in the previous problem. Let's write down this expression and then rewrite it using the binomial theorem. So there I've copied down what the binomial theorem tells us about this expression. That expression equals this awful summation. Now, the question is, what's the coefficient of this expression in that expansion? Well, the key thing is to note that the exponent of the v is a 10. That's going to come from doing v squared to some power. Well, that power is going to have to be the number 5. k is going to have to be 5. So that expression will show up in the k equals 5 term of the expansion. So let's get busy just building the k equals 5 term. Now you see that our expression, u to the 8th, v to the 10th, really does show up in the k equals 5 term. And the coefficient is this thing. The value of 9 choose 5 is 126, so the coefficient is minus 126. That's the end of that example. Now, recall the definition of a closed form expression from one of our earlier videos, the video for homework 5.2. A closed form expression is a mathematical expression that involves a known finite number of standard operations. In our final example, example 3, we are to use the binomial theorem to simplify the sums, writing each in closed form without a summation symbol. So that expression is not uh, written using just the basic operations. It's got this summation symbol. Well, the idea of this is that we're sort of using the binomial theorem backwards. In the previous example, we had expressions like this, and we use the binomial theorem to write those expressions using summations. In the current problem, we're given an expression in the form of a summation, so we should use the binomial theorem to write this in, a, in some way without the summation. Well, the key for most of them is going to be uh, to write this again in the form that exactly matches the template for the binomial theorem. So in the formula for the binomial theorem, the term that has an exponent k is on the far right. The term that has an exponent n minus k is uh, to the left of that. And then the n choose k comes first. So let's rewrite this. Now we recognize something that has exactly the form of the right side of the binomial theorem. We have exactly one of those, so we can replace that with one of these. So we use the binomial theorem to replace this summation expression with something that's not a summation expression. Now that can be simplified. So our answer is 12 to the n. There's our closed form expression for this summation symbol. Let's go on. Question B. Find a closed form expression for this summation expression. Well, we need to put that in uh, standard form as well. So the first step rewriting involves this trick, where I just simply insert the number 1. This expression is just the number 1. 
now we recognize that we've got exactly the form of the binomial theorem. Our a is the number 1, and our b is the number 13. So we can use the binomial theorem to rewrite this as 1 plus 13, that quantity raised to the nth power. So in other words, just 14 to the n. Let's go on. Question C. Rewrite this summation expression in closed form. Well, we'll do the same thing. Rewrite this in a, in a couple of steps using tricks and just uh, rewriting the exponential expression. Our result is that this messy summation expression is just simply 14 thirteenths raised to the nth power. Let's go on. Question D. Rewrite this summation expression in closed form. Well, I'm going to uh, first uh, move these terms into the standard position. Now we recognize that that is the standard form of the binomial theorem, one, one side of it, so we can just use the binomial theorem to replace that expression with something else. We see that our messy summation expression is just a, a messy way of writing 13 plus x to the nth power. That's the end of that example, and that's the end of the video. Thank you.